Hi everyone, uh, I'm, I'm Andy. Uh, I'm a software engineer on the contract API team at STEM. Uh, so STEM is a platform that empowers uh, music and video creators to distribute their content and, um, and track their earnings. So we want to make it really easy uh, to release and get paid for your music and video. Uh, but today I'm here to talk about uh, why we chose GraphQL for our API, uh, some problems that we had in using it with SQL, and how we solve these problems with our open, uh, with our open source NPM package, JoinMonster. So, um, why GraphQL? Well, as you all know, uh, you don't want to deal with too many round trips between client and API, and you don't want to get a bunch of data that you're not using from your rest routes. You're right, you don't want to deal with overfetching. And so, you build a GraphQL API, and these problems are solved because one request gets you all the data for your view, no more, no less. Uh, but that doesn't solve all your performance problems because you still have to make sure that GraphQL executes efficiently against your backend. And if you're using SQL, um, like we are, a naive application might end up doing too many SQL queries. So let me illustrate this with an example. Uh, we have this schema that has users with many posts, with many comments, and say we want to get some data with a query like this. So how might we resolve this query? So we could get our post field, so we could resolve that by doing one SQL query for all the posts. And then each post could resolve its comments by doing one SQL query for all the comments. But what if this user has 30 posts? So that means running this resolver 30 times, one SQL query each, that adds up to 31 SQL queries to resolve each user. So it looks like we're running into a round trip problem again. So let's try a different approach. Let's try to do this all in one query. So how do we typically get data from multiple tables in SQL? Well, uh, typically with a join. So let's go up here to the users resolver. And when we get the users, let's join on the posts and on the comments. So we send this query off to our database. What we get is one big result set with all those data. And let's assume that we can take that big flat array and nest it or hydrate it. That is, convert it to the correct object shape that our GraphQL schema is expecting. So assuming we can do that, well, then the posts and the comments are already resolved, right? Because the data is already there. So, OK, it looks like we did it. We solved the round trip problem, which works great for queries like this one. But what about this one? They only want the users and the posts. So why would we bother joining on the comments? Worse still, what if they only want users? Um, so it looks like we're, we're getting all these data, and it's a waste because um, they just don't want that data. So now we have an overfetch problem. We have this one-size-fits-all SQL query um, that becomes wasteful for some GraphQL queries. So this is why we built JoinMonster. Um, we wanted a way to do batch data fetching with SQL in a single round trip without resorting to overfetching. So this is, this is our solution to these problems. So let me show you how this works. So it's basically, it's basically a, a query planner where it looks at a GraphQL query and automatically generates the SQL dynamically where it'll ask for the right columns and join on the right things and say I want posts and comments, it joins on both. But if I, if I didn't want the comments, we'll notice it won't join on the comments. So in order to get a library to do this, we need to make a few assumptions about how your data is modeled. Your SQL tables map to GraphQL object types, and that's done by decorating the type definition with some additional metadata, like the table name and its unique key. And then your fields depend on the columns. So fields like these could depend on one SQL column, or perhaps they could depend on multiple and resolve the value from those dependencies. Or you could have fields that don't depend on any and just get their data from elsewhere. So where do joins come into this? Well, say you have a field that is all itself another object type, with another table. This is assumed to come from, from a join. So you can decorate that field with a function that generates your join condition. And that's all you have to do to your schema. Now we're, uh, we can just import our function. And we're back here at the user's resolver. So instead of doing one big query, now we call join monster, pass it the GraphQL resolve info, 
And it looks at the parsed query syntax tree, and it looks at your decorated schema definition, generates the SQL, passes it to this callback, which you write to query whatever database you're using, uh, and return the raw data. Um, and then once JoinMonster has your raw data, it hydrates it, or it shapes it into that of your schema, so that after JoinMonster returns um, all of the child resolvers, they can find the data at you know, the property names that it expects. Um, and after that point, you don't need any SQL queries. It's all resolved. All the data is there. So, so what we've done is we've taken this picture and sort of reaped the benefits of this batch requesting all the way down to the database layer. Uh, some other features we have, um, although we started to handle JoinMonster at the root of the schema, you don't have to. Um, you can do it at any depth, uh, resolve any field as long as you decorate its object type. Um, we have functions to generate where conditions. We support many-to-many -many relations. We have a couple different options for pagination, and we work pretty well with uh, GraphQL Relay. So here's, here's an example of handling the node interface and a relay connection and automatically paginating that uh, in a SQL query. Uh, so some, some benefits that we see here are uh, the ability to get all your data in a single query without resorting to overfetching. Um, we think it's very maintainable because you're not manually writing queries. That's one less thing that you have to change when your schema changes. Um, we say it's unobtrusive. It does not take away your ability to define your schemas or the data types or the custom resolve functions. Those all coexist. It's declarative. You're simply defining the data requirements of your GraphQL fields on your schema, um, SQL columns. Uh, and finally, we say that GraphQL sort of becomes your ORM, so you don't even need to use one. All you have to do is add some metadata to, uh, alongside your schema, and it becomes not only uh, self-documenting, but also self-mapping. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're open source. Uh, check us out on GitHub. Uh, submit a pull request, please. Um, you can learn more by checking out our documentation, and you can find uh, live versions of the demos I showed you on Heroku. Uh, and by the way, we're hiring. <laughs>